This is the property graph, which shows how data is stored in NewPrint. Understanding the property graph is key in writing custom queries, so this video will go through it in depth and show how it can be used to write custom queries. The circles represent nodes, the arrows represent relationships between nodes, also called edges, and the rectangles contain properties of the nodes and relationships they point to. The blue nodes are neuron nodes. Each body in the dataset with at least one synapse is labeled segment, and segments with at least two presynaptic sites and or ten postsynaptic sites are also given the label neuron. Now let's take a look at a single neuron node. If you are just looking for a neuron without wanting to specify anything about connecting neurons, this node alone will have all the information you need to write your match statement. To turn this node into a match statement, simply place the label of your choice inside of parentheses. It's almost as if you have chosen your label, then chopped off the top and bottom of the circle. This is always how you represent a node in the match statement. Simply add match at the beginning of the line to finish the match statement. If you want to refer to this node later on in the query, give it a unique variable before the colon. If you are interested in connections between neurons, one option is to use this path here. Notice the direction of the arrow between the two neuron nodes. The direction of the arrow represents the direction of information flow, meaning the neuron on the left is presynaptic to the neuron on the right. We can turn this graph into text and then into the match statement. The red nodes are synapse set nodes. Each neuron node contains synapse set nodes. Each synapse set contains only the synapses on the starting neuron that connect to one specific partner. This means that each neuron node will have multiple synapse sets. In fact, it will have the same number of synapse sets as it has connecting neurons. We now can turn this path from one neuron to another into the match statement. The green nodes are synapse nodes. Each synapse node contains a single synapse. Each synapse is stored inside a synapse set node. Here again, we find a pathway to connect one neuron to another. And again, we can make this pathway a match statement by turning it into text and adding match at the beginning. How do you choose which of these match statements you should be using? Well, that depends on which properties you need to use in your query. One thing to note about properties before we continue is that properties are symmetrical across the graph, meaning that each node of the same type has the same properties. Another thing to note is that the deeper you go into the property graph, the more computational power it takes to complete your query. Don't use the synapse nodes unless there is no other option in NewPrint to get the information needed. Let's take a look at an example using only these nodes, relationships, and properties first. For the sake of simplicity, we will choose to use the neuron label. And let's call the neuron on the left, neuron A, and the neuron on the right, neuron B. We can even name the relationship between A and B. Let's call that C. We know the match statement for this path looks like this. This match statement tells NewPrint to look for all instances of one neuron connects to another. We can now write the return line to tell NewPrint what information we want it to return to us. We start with return, followed by the properties we want returned, in the format variable.property. Here are the definitions of each property. Now we can return information such as the neuron type and body ID of each neuron A and each neuron B. While this alone is technically a complete custom query, this is a huge query. You are telling it to look and report on all instances of one neuron is presynaptic to another. Running this query on a large data set such as the Hemibrain will force NewPrint to look at and return nearly 70 million relationships. Not only would this return too much information to be of much use, but this query would likely time out the server or freeze your browser. We will have to narrow down what we are looking for in order to actually get results. We can do this with the WHERE statement, which goes in between the MATCH and RETURN statements. 
Say that we want to look at connections between Kenyan cells, KCs, and mushroom body output neurons, M-bonds. We know from the literature that KCs are presynaptic to M-bonds, so here, A would be a KC, and B would be an M-bond. We can specify the neuron types of A and B in the WHERE statement using the property type of neuron nodes. We call properties of nodes and relationships in the WHERE statements in the same way we do in the return statement, with variable dot property, but followed by a definition of your requirements for that property. So to specify that neuron A must be of the KC cell type, we can use A dot type contains KC. The contains here is not the same as the contains relationship seen on the property graph. The reason we use contains is because the cell type will not just be KC, but it could be KCG, KCAB, KCA'B', or any of the KC subtypes. If we want all of these to be included, we use contains KC. We can do the same with neuron B, but with M-bond. Notice that we use AND to separate objects in the WHERE statement, but we use commas to separate objects in the return statement. We can now try this query in NewPrint, and we see that we get 31,000 results. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, but let's narrow down these results even further with more WHERE filters. We can restrict our results to only the neurons that are given the highest completion status of traced. We can also specify which brain regions, or ROIs, our neurons are in, with the ROI property of neurons. The ROI property is referenced differently than the other properties, as shown by the right angle brackets around that property in the property graph. For this, we use the format of variable.ROI abbreviation inside of backquotes. So if we want to specify that our KCs have synapses in the gamma lobe, we can use a.glr. We can also specify that we are only interested in neuron pairs that have greater than 50 connections with each other. Before we run this query, let's add c.weight to the return line so that we can see the number of connections between each neuron. We can run this query in NewPrint and see that this time we get 34 results. This KCG connects to this M-bond number 5 174 times, which is higher than any other KC connecting to an M-bond on this list. Now what if we wanted to look at the relative locations of each of these synapses to do further analysis? We can see here that none of these properties on the nodes and relationships above will allow us to see the actual location of synapses. Let's take another look at the properties on the property graph and see if we can report synapse location. On the synapse node, we see the location property that will show us the location of a synapse. Because we want to use synapse location, because that property is on the synapse node, and because we want to report information on neuron A and connecting neuron B, that means we will have to use this pathway in our match statement. And again, to make this pathway into a match line, we simply turn the graph into text and put it all together with match at the beginning. Here are the properties that we can use for each of these nodes. We can indicate that neuron A is the KCG that we found, and that neuron B is the M-bond number 5, using the body ID property of neuron nodes. And now, we want to report the location of PSDs on neuron B that receive information from neuron A. Because we are not specifying any filters on the location of each of the synapses, but instead we just want to report their raw location, we can put the location property in the return line. Here, we will return the location of the postsynaptic densities represented by variable S2. Returning S2.location will return a JSON file, but you can separate them out by specifying the X, Y, and Z location separately. You can put brackets around the locations to return them as a single column.